play. All right. So, guys, this is the amazing and wonderful <laughs> Anna. Anna, look at like everything. Like, look at. Let me see these shoes. Look at this. She came prepared. Like, she is like amazing. Like, she's just chilling, yep. relaxing this coat, everything. So, yep. I. Well, do you want to say introduce yourself real quick? Hi, I'm Anna. Um, I'm not telling you my age. So that's weird. Um, this lovely lad is going to interview me, I guess, about cancer, health, life, all of that. Everything. She's yeah. wonderful, and I've met her through a friend, and we just like became friends even yeah. more. My chemo party, I think, was yeah. the first time I met you. Yeah. No, uh, you invited me to your puppy party. Yeah, party for pups, uh -huh. and then chemo party. Yes. Yes, like yeah. she's like very into animals. Yeah. She's always been into thinking about everybody before herself. Like she's someone who I inspire to be and somebody that we should <laughs> all literally inspire to be. Like she's the most selfless person I know. Like, so a little bit about your backstory is, how did, how did you, when did you first get diagnosed with cancer? Uh, August 19th of 2015 was the first diagnosis of cancer. But I started being sick in the summer of 2014 and then February 19th of 2015, I had my first grand mal seizure. And it's not slowed you down at all. No. Like, if you follow her on Facebook <laughs> or anything, she's like, keep going. This is like one of her many outfits <laughs> that she just wears to the doctor's office. So what inspired you to like to go to the doctor's office and stuff like that? So I actually didn't start, I failed y'all. I did not start wearing like costume costumes until I was cancer free June 10th of 2016 and August 19th of 2016, so a year to the date I was diagnosed, I was getting a biopsy that would show my cancer came back and it had metastasized. So that day I wore um, a sparkly halter suit basically, fishnets and a satin jacket and my partner at the time was like, are you going to wear pants with that? And I put on the tiniest scrap of fabric ever um and i was like fine it's pants whatever and uh once i was done with the biopsy i was so pissed off and uh because i only found out later you can get pain meds for the biopsy so they were just jabbing needles in my throat going around to get the different cells and stuff they're tiny needles don't worry um and after that i was like fuck this fuck everyone i'm wearing my fishnets i'm wearing my suit for lack of a better word in my jacket and we ended up going to snooze after that and that was the first time they were initiated too into and my snooze is the if you guys don't have a snooze it's a like a breakfast eatery like an island yeah. or something yeah so and you just like so remember phrase the question so like whenever you started going to the doctor's office like what inspired you to go to that is like getting dressed like she has many many different <laughs> outfits like different colors different outfits different themes so the whole purpose of like going to the doctor's office made you like say fuck cancer like yeah because people go to the office and they like are sad and it sucks and it's a horrible time but like you just go in there you like make it a, a, i don't know if this is bad to say but you make it a full-on circus oh i do i do and i really so the funny part is like at one point this is so bizarre to me like strangers wanted to take pictures with me they wanted to know what was going on as soon as they heard the cancer word they were they immediately had family member friends somebody who had battled cancer um so they were like i want to take a picture so i can show my friend and i always figured even if they're laughing at me negatively it like that split second they're not in the hospital they're not you know even if you're visiting a friend if you've ever been to methodist in the outpatient center and i mean it sucks methodist is an amazing hospital but it fucking sucks you know just to be there and so yeah i just i've always been into costumes i've always made my own costumes out of nothing um and i was like i call it my costume closet and my heels shit i can't wear to work obviously and so i was like i'm just gonna keep dressing up and i'm just gonna put, throw something together and call it an outfit and wear whatever and i'm not modest at all and honestly if you've stayed in a hospital you cannot be modest because you're you're basically naked for everyone so. true so um yeah i just started dressing up and then it kind of went from there and yeah 
And do you want to tell them like what kind of cancer you have or anything? Oh yeah, so I had thyroid cancer both times, the quote unquote easy cancer. And um, Which is not easy. It, yeah. Like it's like what would you rather be executed for? The electric chair or like the needle. Either's gonna suck, right? Like yeah. either's shitty. Like there's not really a difference. Um so it was thyroid cancer. Um, because of shitty insurance, I was initially only gonna have from my left side to the middle. And by the time I got my and was able to have my first cancer surgery, it had metastasized over to the right. And so the doctor had to cut from here all the way over. And then the second surgery, he had to go back in the first scar and go all the way to here again for where it metastasized. Yeah, he's an amazing surgeon because y'all don't see anything. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. I did. He's very proud of it, and he freaked out when I said I was going to get a tattoo across my neck. So, oh, if you were, if you could yeah. see anything, yeah, he was like, no, no, because he he takes pictures. He's proud of the scar. Yeah, if you like, you can't you can't even see anything. Like, I'm we're pretty close right now. You can't see yeah. like nothing. Which guys kind of makes me mad because I'm like, you I went to, through this twice. You like, wanted a battle scar to be like, yep, yeah, yeah. That's my scar. And you can, I, you're definitely someone that's like proud of your scars. You're bad. Oh, yeah. Just oh, like, yeah. And she tells her story to everybody. She's like out there and open about her like cancer and stuff like yeah. that. Like whatever she's going through. Like she's like, I follow her on Facebook. Like every time whenever she posts something, like she always just make it like, not like something super sad. Like whatever she's going through. She's like, oh guys, I just had a seizure. So how was your day? Yeah. No big deal. Um, because I had so much to just random out of left field stuff, I mean, to me, it's no big deal. Um, my great grandma, my grandma, my grandma's sister, my mom, my mom's sister all had cancer. So when I got sick, I kind of expected it to be cancer. So it wasn't a shock when he was like, okay, it's cancer. We all thought it would be non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, B or T cell, which runs in my family. So hearing thyroid cancer, we were like, Okay, a little breather. So it does like one of your family. Yeah, like, yeah. So I, yes. So for me, certain health things, everyone else is like, oh, this is a big deal. This is trauma. This is whatever. And to me, it's like, oh, one more fucking thing. You know, no big deal. Um, yeah, I'm very grateful though. I have been, you know, either, I've never hurt anyone else due to like say my seizures or you know, I've never been in a place like somebody's always gotten me to the ER. In Have you ever hurt yourself for having a seizure? Oh yeah, I've had a concussion every time except the last two. Uh, the third one, I was in the salon. A friend of mine was coming in to see me, and I, right before I hugged her, I felt to have a seizure. And thank God, I had coworkers who knew. Turn her on the side if she, you know, she's gonna start throwing up. Don't put anything in her mouth. She, you can't swallow your tongue. Um, and so that time I didn't, because instead of hitting the concrete and then repeatedly hitting my head, um, they caught me. But otherwise, yeah, I have the one time. I guess it was bad. I, it was a week after like my fourth surgery in less than a year, and I fell off my bed hit the concrete and then I had my glasses on. So my glasses kept hitting my head too. And uh, it was right before the election. Yeah, cause they were like, they have to ask you questions, right? And so they're like, who's the president? And I was like, Obama. And then I was like, wait a second, I don't know. I think he's still the president. Oh, okay. So yeah, it was. For some of you who are like are new to this, Anna and stuff, her, she's actually a hairstylist. She's still working every, like, just about every day, right? Um, now I'm down to three days a week, and they're part-time days. And the reason being is, a for the clients, it sucks when you have an appointment with me. I'm very sorry, and I'm sick, and I can't go in. You know, and there have been days when I've pushed myself, and I'm like, I can go in, and my boss will look at me and be like, You look like shit. What's going on? You know, like, and I'm like, I'm really tired or I didn't feel good. And I, I feel really guilty when I have to call in. And so, yeah. And you still want to go to work. Like you yes. still, like nothing, cancer doesn't stop you. Oh no. Like I would prefer, like if I was back to normal, the five days a week, long hours. I hated booking lunches on my schedule because I'd rather take clients and, 
Yeah, so now it's, you know, because my clientele has kind of shifted into the fun, which I, I prefer, you know, we have your formulas and everything. Um, so I'm slower and, you know, my boss made a good point is that first I need to say the entire almost month before Thanksgiving, I was out sick. Like, um, it was pneumonia again. I tend to skip over sinus infections and go straight to pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, weirdly, they did something. They found out I had staph in my nose, which I know we all have staph on our bodies, but being with the public, working with the public, especially in my nose, I can't have that and be at work. And so I didn't even realize it was Thanksgiving and I told my boss, I'm like, oh yeah, Tuesday I'm getting, or Monday or Tuesday I'm getting tested, then I can come back to work. And he's like, it's Thanksgiving next week. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to get a note and they had to re-swab and make sure I was, I didn't have staff again. Um, to actually come back to work because it's so dangerous and contagious and again I would never want it to hurt or have anyone affected by something going on with me. Yeah. You know, because um, I don't know if they have, you know, little children at home who don't have the um, immune system or, you know, they're around older people who don't have or just other people who are sick already and they don't have the immune system to take anything I have. So, I also found out there's two types of pneumonia, one's that contagious and one's that's not. Clearly, I don't, I don't have the contagious one because I've been at work and none of my family there has ever gotten pneumonia, so. And every, I like how you said your family because you're like, not just like co-workers or friends, but like family. You like, because yeah. with you, everybody's like your family, like you yeah. literally care about everybody in your life. Yeah. Like you don't just put something in your life and like, oh, hey friend. You literally care about every single person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I don't, you're not in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I no, don't have time for you. I communicate with everything, and I love that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm so open because for, I know, my coworkers and a lot of my clientele, I was the very first person they knew personally and up close who had cancer. And a lot of my coworkers um, are younger, too, and so they may have had an older relative get it or get sick, but they've never seen like the radiation, the chemo, understand yeah. being quarantined or in isolation. Like they didn't know that, you know? And like, so I wanted to make it as open as possible. Like if people have questions, I want them to feel comfortable asking me, you know? Because it's very hard. A lot of people hear cancer and they automatically think you're gonna die. Oh shit! And that makes people uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Because whenever my mom was diagnosed with cancer years ago, and I was like, oh, she's gonna die. Like I was already thinking, I'm like, oh my god. Because they even tell you like, I remember my sister called me and she was crying and she was like freaking out. She's like, I don't know what we're gonna do. I was like, well, I I think we we have to like just think positive. I think because nobody talks about this. Mm -mm. Nobody. Not even in school, nobody tells you like, oh, hey, you, you should prepare for the worst or something or not even like preparing for the worst. Like, why do you have to prepare for the worst? Yeah. Like, you've been, what is it, five years since six? Yeah, like, about five and a half years and just being sick and random things coming up. And yeah. And I'm just like looking at her right now and like you don't think that like she has cancer. You don't think that you're sick, even yeah. though you're going through something right now and you're like pushing yourself every day to just be happy choose happiness, be loving to one another, yeah. and go out to the world and spread so much awareness about things that she cares about, like dogs, friends, outfits, drag yeah. queens, anything. <laughs> She's out into the world, like, showing herself. Like, what inspired you to just push yourself to show everything, to just show the world, like, you can be this without having to, like, be sick? Um, it was never one of those like purposeful things. It just happened. So I've always made my own Halloween costumes and I've always just picked a theme and then made an outfit around that theme. I got all my scans and done. So, uh, before Halloween is my like year date of cancer free. So I was officially cancer free in 2017. Or I feel like Every day is Halloween for you. I mean, it pretty much is. Yeah. Yeah. I like she's even when she's like um, in the hospital, like whenever she's in the office or something. Do you have? Do you ever have like a doctor like take the pictures of you? Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, I've gotten pictures of myself with all my doctors. Um, my doctors, like, y'all are gonna laugh. But they almost are like disappointed if I come in like somewhat normal clothes. They're like, what, no costume? Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, they, to me, I think, oh, are you okay? No, they do. They judge my mentally how I'm doing by if I'm wearing a costume and how much glitter I'm wearing. Yeah, like, I think if you didn't have a costume or anything, I'd be like, then that's for me to draw concern. Yeah. No, a friend of mine, too, she's like, I can always judge where you're at mentally is if you've took, basically taken the time to like put together an outfit gone to the hospital in a costume, you know, then they're like, okay, we know she's good, so positive, you know. Yeah. Doctors have hard jobs too, you know, and now, like, my doctor staff, like, they're family to me now. Like, some of them are on my Facebook, my oncologist, shout out to Dr. Z, he's on my Facebook now, which is he, so bizarre. He's watching her episode, <laughs> he's making sure she's surviving and she has yeah. cancer, and yeah. that she has, like, glitter. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. She, like, I don't know if you guys can tell, she has, like, so much glitter on her. I'll show you afterwards, but she has, like, glitter on her forehead, eyes, hair, oh, yeah. boobs, everything. It's, it's funny, like, any friend who stays over, like, they automatically get glitter on them and stuff. I love that. That's why I'm, I'm like, give it yeah. to me. Yeah. I, like, buy a high highlighter, and, like, I think somebody was like, oh, you look sweaty. I'm like, no, it's highlight. Yeah, like, bitch, please. What? Like, no, this is this purposeful. This is glow. Like, oh. She has, like earrings tattoos do you have any tattoos that's like something like each tattoo have obviously has meaning yeah but which ones are like most one that you like look at that and you're like i'm gonna keep going well so this is not positive but i have like fuck the world right here and i got it way way back before trump before everything like before when i was a young and in college i was a baby and I got it, and it's funny, my tattoo artist, I love him, he never once questioned me getting it, and you know, when I have really bad days, and I like, am so down, and like, the world's against me, I'm just, look at that, I'm like, yeah, fuck the world, I got this. I have a ring that says, fuck everyone, that's another, if I'm having a bad day, I'm like, you know, of course that doesn't mean those I love, and those yeah. that are close, it's like everyone else, I have my circle, and. Cause that's everyone. how I am too, when like, yeah. sometimes, you just have like a bad day, some shitty person just tells something mm -hmm. to you, you're like, oh, I hate everybody. Because I know I have those moments yeah. too where I just like, sometimes they post or I try to refrain from that. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's like, hey, we're not all bad. I'm like, well, you know you're not bad. But I'm yeah. just like saying that, yeah. ugh. Yeah. Just everybody, the people that are just bad. Like, you know, it's always takes that one app, rotten apple. Mm -hmm. Try to rotten the bunch. I'm like, no, screw all of you. And then you see the next person that's nice. You're like, oh, everybody's a good person again. Yeah, yeah. And I've had to restrain myself there's been a few posts that i'll like type it out and i'm so angry and i'll like screenshot it put it with my journals on my phone and then i'll delete it and not post it i'll be like okay um yeah so there's been moments like that that it's not rainbows and butterflies by all means but you know that's a good part like all my doctors kind of knew each other before i was their patient and so nobody's like oh I gotta be in charge I gotta be in charge you know they all work together you know and that's it's kind of funny I've actually had to fire two doctors because they wanted to take over from my doctors or they would trash my doctors and I'd be like oh, hold up mind your step okay yeah. so like one doctor basically said my life is a train wreck my doctors don't know what the hell they're doing you know my my surgeon was shit and all this and i was in tears and i had an appointment right after and i was seeing my oncologist and so i call and i'm like i'm crying this is what happened and i get in with my oncologist and he shuts the door and he's like well fuck that guy i'll take care of that then and sure enough and so once i was cancer free i'm kind of petty y'all Hey, I mean, I you're wrote, going through enough. You don't need somebody else uh, and make yeah. you shit, shit on your life and like make you feel like less than. Yeah, and so I wrote a card to the doctor I fired, and I was like, just uh, so you wrote you know, him a card. Yes, and I was like, I don't know. You probably won't remember me. You said I, my life was a train wreck. You didn't want to be part of my life because I was probably gonna die and all this. But well, guess what, motherfucker? I'm cancer free. My surgeon did two more surgeries on me no scarring like bitch please i filled the thing with fucking glitter like it was a normal card and i i took like almost a full jar of glitter in there 
I feel bad for his cleaning staff, I do. But he actually was, he tried to be petty back, it didn't work, but he sent me a letter that was like, oh, congratulations on your health, da da da. And then he was like, I will say, as of this date, you're no longer a patient here. I'm like, bitch, I wasn't a patient two years ago. Like, back your shit up. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, you know, with everyone in my life, I'm very protective. Of course, my doctors too. And, you know, it's funny, like, my surgeon's been best surgeon in Houston many years. He's nationally known, you know, like, my oncologist goes around and does talks on different cancers and blood type of blood stuff and all that you know so fuck that guy yes i mean screw that like you're trying your best and you're just living and you're not yeah. like someone who's miserable and like just like oh cancer you gotta go yeah. the next day and sit down at home till my next appointment because that's like something like whenever i wish i would have known you before whenever my mom was going through cancer because i remember whenever i would see her going through that like the only thing that we would know is like we had to try to make her happy. Like some days it sucked for her, some days mm. she would be sad. But she would just come from the hospital to the couch, hospital to the couch, and like yep. sit down and watch movies, and like she would eat her favorite ice cream. And like that would mostly be the routine we would try to make her happy. But like, because we didn't know anything, like how does how does cancer work? How do you do anything? What do you say? What do you, how do you, you know? Yeah. And, and that's honestly, like I firmly feel if I can help someone either find a doctor, help them through the process of getting disability, help them through like either the patient themselves with cancer or a family member, if I can help make their journey just a little bit easier, like everything mine would be worth it, you know? And so I've actually, I'm currently in a fight with the Methodist, they call them patient liaisons, but they're customer service and I call them on their shit. I'm like, you're, I've been a cancer patient twice, only with your hospital, and I didn't know of all these programs that existed and all the shit that it could have really helped me getting through it that I never knew about until, you know, my oncology staff was like, oh, you, you know, have they told you about this floor? And I'm like, no. And ironically, they had found all these charities that I could probably apply to or ask for, whether it's food or rides or whatever. And the social worker I saw didn't have any of that information. And she actually took the paperwork from me to file in her own file to then potentially give cancer people. And so Danny, the Methodist patient liaison I saw, was like, oh yeah, we offer this, we offer that. And I'm like, bullshit you do not offer that you're saying oh i think they come every now and then and it's all volunteers that he thinks they come but he doesn't have a schedule he doesn't know you know and i was like this is I your think, job to know it's your job to know and it's those social workers jobs to know and yeah. she talked to me just like a girlfriend not getting anything done for like 30 minutes and i walk out of there and she's had all that information and she gave me nothing and so I'm really trying to work on that. Unfortunately for Danny, he gave me his boss's name, who's in charge of patient liaison. So I'm done with him and I'll move on to Kim and I'll be calling her and asking for her. And they had a meeting coming up and he's like, oh no, you can't go to that. Well, bitch, I'm going. And I found out which floor and the phone number directly to the president of Methodist. So yeah, I'll she be- She will go in the most sparkliest, yeah, I'll, outfit. Yeah, I'll just show on up and be like, hey, I think you need to have an appointment with me and this is what's gonna happen. And this is what's gonna go on from now on. And yeah, you don't get a chance to say no. Like. Sorry, that ship has passed with me. I don't take that anymore when I know like a medical official can change it and can make it better. I'm like, you can say no all you want, but this is what's gonna happen. Sorry. Like you're not just fighting for your life, you're fighting for everybody else's life is what it seems yeah. like every day. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I remember when my mom had cancer and my grandma had cancer, like there was no nothing. Like I had to tell my mom certain programs like look good, feel better through the American Cancer Society. I'm like, you need to sign up and go. It's two hours. They teach you about, you know, how to put on, if you lose your eyebrows, how to draw on your eyebrows, how to do your hair, where to find wigs, where to find hats, you know, how to style them, how to wear scarves, you know, we're in Houston, right? So it's really hot, it's humid, and cancer patients, especially if they have a bald head, have to be careful that the wig doesn't rub a certain way or the wig 
cap doesn't rub and create an abrasion that turns into like a scab or a sore that could then lead to something worse. So I knew nothing about that. Like I literally myself only know about the like, American Cancer Association and Santa mm -hmm. Cancer. And to me, I'm like, oh, that's that's all that's gonna help. And like this, I did. You guys know that I knew none of this. Yeah, about how, you, like the the wig and everything. There, yeah. So it's uh, look good, feel better, and it's all you get a tote bag full of products, and they're all very good. Like Aveda's part of them, which they they better be. Aveda was one of the first lipsticks I pulled out, so I was like, well, thank God they're already part of this, because otherwise they would have been. It's all very good makeup lines, um, skincare lines, because, you know, you can only, your skin's very fragile, it's very delicate, you know, and like, if you're going through radiation, you're going to end up with like third degree burns, so um, you need to very, like, take care of that and make sure you're using the correct products and stuff like that and so that's just one of many organizations there's a like a look good feel better for teens that right now it's only online but because that's what the american cancer society thinks teens are only online and i'm like no they need person to person chatting they need to see other teenagers going through this you know they need to see other um you know, people their age who get it, you know? It's like a club nobody ever signed up for. Literally. You know? And um, there's a look good, feel better for men, but again, I think it's very small, and it's like, but no. And, like, cancer's not small at all. Uh-uh. Like, I've, and whatever she's saying right now, like all these links or anything, I'll show, share them, and I'll put them down below for all of you guys to find out, because I'm sure if you don't know, I don't know, and if you have a loved one or somebody you know, that needs his help like she's here to help yeah. and it help. Oh, wow um i can say i believe it is uber or lyft i'll find out which one but they offer free rides to and from treatment um the american cancer society will try if you're going to a hospital not in your city and you have to travel they'll try to figure out accommodations for you um so when my mom had her second stem cell transplant they put her in it's an apartment within an apartment complex, so very safe, it's close to the hospital, but they like redid the inside of the apartment, so everything's wheelchair accessible, and all my mom had to pay was like the light bill. And there was um, basically like a free taxi service that would go from hospital to that building and back, to that complex and back. And so... That's really good, especially for people like, Sometimes don't even have family where they're seeing it. Like if people come to Houston, from wherever they're at, they come to Houston because we have we have like the best doctors. And it's very international here. So you have people coming in to maybe a country they don't know, a state they don't know, a city they don't know. Yeah. And you know it is hard to like, oh, where am I going to stay for the next six months to a year getting treatment? What am I going to do? You know. And so that's one thing like. Pulling that stigma back from cancer and just like, like you said, not a lot of people know this exists and it's taken a lot of just being around cancer for lack of a better word that I'm, I knew from my mom and now I, I want to get it more out there. Um, you're, you're, you do you still have cancer or you're cancer free now? I am officially two years cancer free. That's amazing. Yeah. That's something yeah. to celebrate every day. Yeah, and it, it's crazy because it doesn't really hit me. Like when they say survivor, I kind of get over that term because I'm like. I feel like you've been surviving every yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> like shit, I'm still surviving right now. Yeah. You know, and so, um, yeah, it's like everyone just getting through one treatment or two treatments or the six weeks of treatment like you're surviving you know and i don't know i feel like that term does a d d disservice to those who have fought and have battled and ended up passing away from cancer and i don't like that you know? they were surviving too they were like doing their best yeah to survive. yeah and you know for instance with my grandma she thought it was allergies for the longest time and then was diagnosed with stage four well she had been battling it and she didn't even know you know and so i 
that term kind of bothers me sometimes. Yeah, because it's like, like you're going through every day's a moment to survive. Yeah, and like, just because, like, the one thing I've found is nobody talks about life after cancer. And the main thing is your life will never be the same. Like, it doesn't matter. You're not going to go back to all of a sudden having the same strength that you've had. You're not going to go back to making as much money as you have. I, you know, people get fired for having cancer just because they take off so much for work. So that right there is bullshit. It's like, once you say you get out of the cancer, it's like, great, now I have all these bills. Now I have all this shit going on. Like, the real world hits you really fast. So I would say it was harder to be cancer free now than it was going through cancer. Cause you, when you're going through cancer, you have the blinders on, you're like, I gotta do this treatment. Okay, so I'll work 10 to two. I go from work immediately to the radiation center. I get my radiation done, I go home. Like that's all it was for six weeks for me in 2016 is like work, radiation, home. So, you know, and for that too, I couldn't really go out. It was hard to find anything to wear because it was all across here. And, you know, obviously immune system, we couldn't really go out too. And so, yeah, it does get isolating a little bit. And I guess that's why, like, I've always dressed up for the hospital is like, that's been like my second home. That's your place to go and have fun? Like, yeah, to, just, like, to actually fun. see people, you know, that's why when I'm with the dogs, I'm like, okay, I'm just like, I could dress jeans, sure, I don't even shave sometimes. Yeah. But then whenever, even if I go to the gym, I'm like, let me try to dress up or shave or something. Yes. Because there's humans out in the world now. Yeah, like there's real people out there, you know, and so it would just be nice, you know. And yeah, with the costumes, everyone, like all the check-in admin desks to the people up giving the CAT scans, PET scans, x-rays, they all know me now. And like, even at one point, all the little, like the Starbucks women and the cafe people, like they knew me, cause I, okay, so I always get coffee for my oncologist and his daughter and daughter-in-law. <laughs> you, you go before your appointment and you get them coffee? Yeah. And it's not even your job, it's not her job to do this or anyway. No. She's going to the, the hospital to get checked up on herself. Yeah. And she's going the extra miles just like, not even that you have to, you're just like, hey, no. here's the coffee. Yeah, well, because I know what they like, and it's like, um, I always like to pretend they're not gonna send me to get blood work or the test or anything like that, but they do. I mean, they do anyways, whatever, I can pretend. Yeah. I can lie to myself. But yeah, I mean, you know, on a call, my oncologist is like my second dad now, and yeah, his, there's all my doctors, their staff are now like family because I've known them for five years. So like oh, yeah. some of them who've had little kids when I first started to see them, you know, their kids are almost teenagers or their kids are now out of the house or in college. And you know, it's just crazy to me. What makes you actually like break down sometimes or sometimes when you just like sit oh, there? Shit. I know that's a little hard because we're just trying to keep it light, but yeah. I feel like some people no, know like it's, all um, Honestly, like, I break down by myself. You know, I don't want anyone around me. I don't want anyone to try to help because, you know, A, people don't understand. As much as I love them, some of my friends just will never get it. Like, they can support me, they can be there, they can love me, but it's me who's going to every single appointment and doing all the scams and doing all of this, you know? Yeah. So. I think that's also why I've gotten so close to my hospital people is like, because they've been there, they've seen it at the worst, you know? Same with my coworkers, like, they've seen me <laughs> when I was on chemo and I would literally be about to mix color and have to run to the back, throw up, you know, go to the bathroom quick, wash my mouth out, wash my hands and go back to mixing color. You know, and thankfully one of them would take the trash bag out or I would take that trash bag out then, you know? So like, it kind of gets intense sometimes, I guess, for some people, <laughs> you know? For me, I'm like, okay, whatever, move it along. Come on, fucking body, like, <laughs> you know? Like, get your shit together. Like, yeah. Wow. It's more, it's not even health stuff that I break down about. It's like people stuff. Like about like, 
whatever's going on, like, in my personal life. Personal. Yeah. Like, and gotta so, be, like, all cancer scheme and all that. Yeah. Like, well, you really find out who your true friends are. You know, I guess with any seriousness, like, whether it's a death or a serious illness or accident or something like that, you find out who your true friends are, who your true, actually, ride or die friends are. Yeah. You know, and part of that is because, like, any surgery, I had to have a do not resuscitate DNR order, um, make sure I had a power of attorney or my will written out that they would ask about, or if they had a file of my will at that hospital, you know? So, like, you have to really be like, okay, this is it. So... You know, okay. I hope I wake up from the surgery. You know, everyone's wow. like, was it a good surgery? Well, yeah, I'm fucking here, bitches. Like, yeah, yeah it was well, a good was, surgery. Yeah, it was a great time. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, people are like, what's a good surgery? The kind you wake up from. You know, that's a great surgery, you know? So. <laughs> the kind you wake up The kind you wake up from, that's the great yeah. surgery. I'm never remember that. I couldn't. Was there ever any, any moment where you were just like, I don't want to do this anymore, or I'm done? Yeah. So when I was diagnosed the second time, I kind of knew um, I had a third surgery within three months. I didn't really bounce back from that surgery. And so when I was going in to get the biopsy, I already knew it had came back. But I knew the time, the second time I would do external radiation and I actually do chemo. And I always said I would never do chemo just because I had seen what it did to my grandma, I would seen what it did to my mom, I knew there would be lasting side effects that I would have to deal with the rest of my life. What is chemo? Like chemo, so you can get it IV, or I would take a pill. So I'd take a pill for two weeks, and then I'd be two weeks off. Oh. And in the two weeks off, my blood, uh, like I would have to have so much white blood cells to be able to be healthy enough to start that two weeks. Um, that was actually the only time my doctor got furious at me is I didn't have enough white blood cells and I was like, well, fuck it. I'm going to start taking chemo anyways because I don't want to slow this down. I'm sure I'm fine. And he was like, I'm like, you're not going to be very happy with me. And he's like, he knew instantly what I had done. And he was like, you can't do that. You can't fuck with your body. Like, you're not ready. Your immune system's jacked up right then. Were you just trying to like, okay, I'm the two? Yeah. No, I would just be like, I can do this. I'm better. I know more. Oh, okay. You know, stubborn. Yeah, you're just like, I got this. Yeah, like, I'm ready. I'm ready I'm over this. this. What more can happen at this point? No, so, I've never, I never thought I'd do chemo. I never wanted to. Uh, my partner at the time said, if you don't do chemo, I'll leave you. So I did chemo and he left anyway. So, fuck me. You got to walk around, whack away. And now you have to do the chemo in here, you say. Yeah, so it was a little, that's one thing I was like, fuck. I did this and it was like for him and it was like. Yeah, uh. and yeah, and so now they're like, well, if you get it a third time. And I'm like, if I get it a third time, peace out, bitches. Yeah. I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to do all the drugs. I'm going to have all the orgies. And either the cartel or the drugs will take me out at some point. I don't know. Oh but the, I'm going and I'm having fun and I'm hurting it up. I don't think anyone for the team tell yeah. me to <laughs> go for it. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it. I'll document all my fun times. Please yeah. do. We'll, yeah. we'll watch. I, I love watching. <laughs> I love, one of my things is like I love watching her adventures or what she's going through because she makes it seem like you're going through this, but you don't have to feel like you're going through this. Like you're not, yeah. Just because you have cancer or you're sick or something's happening in your life doesn't make you seem like you're a bad person or like a person that's like going through something. You don't have to feel like whatever in life you're going through is gonna take you down. You're not gonna be taken down from it. You're gonna be, you're gonna go stronger from it and you're gonna, you're gonna survive from it. Yeah. Because you're surviving, you're not, surviving she is a survivor every day she's <laughs> yeah. like here she's smiling she's dressing up hell yeah i had i couldn't show up just wearing like normal shit yeah i was like i feel weird because i'm like oh i'm normal i should just like put, <laughs> i should have just thrown a whole bunch of glitter after for this like yeah. like oh my god besides like doing this about like wanting to talk about you and your what you're going through and stuff like i also wanted to talk about because you're like a regular hero like, I, for people like me, like, 
you know, people like, oh, Wonder Woman, or <laughs> whatever, like, idolize, idolize, like, celebrities and stuff. For me, I celebrate, or I, the people that are in my life are the heroes that I look up to, or people, like, are the people that, like, oh, wow, that person is this, that, so that, that inspires me, is what I'm trying to say, like, you inspire me every day. That's why I wanted to do this, because you inspire me so much to be exactly who you are free who what you say no filter go on into the world you have good days and bad but you choose to share each and every day like that yeah um you know fuck the world yeah you know we're we're all gonna we're all gonna die we're not getting out of this live you might as well be yourself you might as well be happy you know safe sane and consensual done i don't have a problem with it you know just be your own person and you'll find your tribe it's with the internet whatever you're into you will find it you can and you will oh yeah you you definitely will this is what makes me happy glitter makes me happy i'm gonna wear it you know like Look at this this is her yeah. whole coat that she has on and she's like free showing off her yeah. tattoos and loving yeah that's crazy that your dad yeah that's in memory of my dad Aww. so yeah did he like deer? Was he a hunter? Yeah, he was a hunter. The last summer he was alive, he shot a bear. You know, he took me hunting, but it, it didn't last well because I talked too much. So, like he said, we were up in the deer stand and he's like, there's not even squirrels around us. Oh, you have to be really quiet. Yeah, I, yeah I was not. I was not good at that. So, that ended my hunting career relatively he's early. He's like, that's it. This last time we were coming. Yeah, he was like, all yeah, right. Is there something that makes you like keep pushing? Like every day when you wake up, what what's something that you do right away when you wake up? Like, like um, I have to take my thyroid medicines and my ulcer medicines. First the meds. Yeah, so I have That's to take important. the meds, wait 30 minutes, and then I can eat and drink and stuff. So meds, coffee, um, then I plan my outfit for the day. Yeah. So it's like spandex, or what am I gonna do, and what do I do, and then it matches with that. So. Have you ever, do you ever, I don't think I've ever seen it in regular, like this to me is a regular, like a shirt and jeans. Oh, I don't, regular clothes? I don't own jeans, I don't like pants. We went to her keno party, mm -hmm. and there was like a runway, she had a karaoke thing, we a photo booth, mm -hmm. snacks, chemo inspired snacks, cancer inspired snacks, which <laughs> And honestly, it has just been, angels since last year february that i can say angels are the reason i still have an apartment i've never gone without food i've had my bills paid and that touches me a lot because people don't have to yeah you know and again people don't realize like i work on commission so i can be at work but if i don't have a client i'm not making money and it's, it's weird is that so many people have been like, oh, you should move, you should do this, you should do that. Find another job that's like a normal paycheck. And I'm like, first of all, what? I've done hair for almost 20 years. What the fuck am I gonna do? Yeah. You know? I'm an old woman, I can't even strip now. <laughs> Oh my god. Wait, we got the tits for it. Thank you. She's And she will not let you forget it too. She's in every outfit. Her tits are like right to her well, chin. Well, listen, listen. They are like, there's nowhere else they'll be, okay? Like, thank God they're not like tennis balls and tube socks yet. You know? Yet. So, I mean, you can't really hide them. If you got it, flaunt it. And you're yeah. proud of it. And you're, you're, you're well, and I have my shrubs too, so I have that tattoo. You know? And, oh my and no, now, and now with the scar, like I can't really wear. It's it's nothing about the scar. It's more mentally. Like it feels weird if I have like a higher up collar that's like pressing against it. So like necklaces, I have to have the longer chain. And it's not that the scar bothers me. It's that being around my neck, like so close, that I'll like start so itching at the scar. Like, yeah. Be free. Um, yeah. So that's why I mean, like it's always out there and in the open. It's like, mm -hmm. and I don't care, but I'm like, whatever. So, now, where are you now in life? You know, I really, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, it sounds good to like move or do any of this. I have a friend that in Puerto Vallarta, he has a piano bar and I met him through a really good friend. And so for a long time I was like, 
fuck it, selling everything. I'll live on the beach. I'll just go there. Yeah. And then, you know, I have to be practical. I'm like, oh, I have to find hospital and doctors or plan to come back every six months and then get prescriptions that will last me every six months, you know? So you still need to imagine everything just yeah. going. Yeah, so, you know, I lived in West Texas for a little bit and I love that town and I could see moving there, but then I was like, shit, where's the biggest hospital? You know, do I have all my doctors there? Will I have to drive two and a half hours for a checkup? Will I just fly back to Houston? You know, and so it sucks, but it's all stuff I really, I have to think about before I do anything health-wise. And obviously I'm not out of the woods because I was in the ICU for five days, day after Christmas. So yeah. <laughs> like, all right, maybe it's good to just stay here and, you know. And, you know, I want to get back working full time and I want to get, you know, continuing education and being able to go to classes and learn, um, you know, I want to get back to where I could go back to New York Fashion Week um, for the fall and the spring to do hair, like Miami Fashion Week. You used to do, you used to like travel all over? I used to, yeah, I used to educate for Aveda and I would do Houston, I've done San Antonio. I, I could see doing it again. I mean, it's like education in general in this country where it's a lot of work and a lot of your own money for very little payoff and people who do it, they do it because they love it and they love the teaching. You know, it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm rolling in the bank now as an educator. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, it's a lot of, you know, your weekends, your off time when you're teaching the class, because that's when other stylists and people have off time, you know. So, I don't know in that aspect of like, yeah, I miss doing photo shoots. I miss working backstage, you know. If anybody's in the Houston area or something, <laughs> hire her. She's, or if, if you want to pick her up, take her on a plane. She yes, knows her stuff. Yes, I will. And I she's will, very talented too. I will she's fly creative. anywhere for you. Listen, if you're paying, I mean, everything has a price. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you're, you, you have to, you have the talent. Oh, thank you. She's very creative. She knows what to do. She's a hairstylist, colorist. Yeah, so I do everything except cut hair. Oh, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. She knows what to do though. She's got this, and she's got mm -hmm. the creative images in her head she knows what, she knows what looks good and what's gonna help you look good she's very confident and not only herself but it helps you be confident in yourself as well she helps she's like somebody that you need that gives you like the height she's a hype man in your life <laughs> that everybody needs well it's you know it's i firmly believe and like you said about your friends are inspirations like not celebrities to me it's my friends yeah. who are in the trenches or doing their grind and their successes, I want to celebrate just as much, if not more, mine. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm proud of them. I know someone who started here and now they're way up here. And it makes me happy for them, you know? And yeah, I think more people should be like that. There's no competition. You know, everyone's on a different path. Nobody's the same, mm -hmm. you know? And so why look down on somebody else's happiness or success? Amen. You know, like, that makes you a gross human being. Mm -hmm. It really does. I mean, we should yeah. all celebrate each other for being just who we are. Yeah. For being happy, for you being a hard stylist, you being an artist, people just being who they are in general is something that we should all celebrate. One more question. What is something that you live by every day that no matter, like, if you're down, or whatever you're going through in life, like if it's a hard moment and it feels a little tough, you're after, after you're crying or you just have the hard day, what's something that keeps you going every day? I just say, fuck the world, fuck everyone. Got it, I'll do it. You know, and again, not my inner track, not my people, you know, but for me it's like, yeah. The world, I got this. If you can't tell them something that helps, something that encourages you, like what I what I always do is whenever I'm talking to them, my friends, I call everybody my special friends, my special friends, <laughs> my heroes in my life, something that, something like a message that they can take away from all of this. I think everyone has an inner strength, 
you know i hate being labeled brave for all my health shit. i hate that because everyone's brave yeah. you know because the world will eat you up and spit you out and every day should be celebrated you know and everyone's going through something hard everyone has their own shit stuff that's going on that's bringing them down so just simply showing up and being there is a lot you know and it's regardless you know for me a long time it was simply being able to like walk downstairs or not spend all day in bed and be able to just walk around you know or you know it'd be like okay i could drive myself to the hospital today all right that's a huge thing or like i could go do brunch today Woo! you know like little things like that should be more celebrated you know if you have anxiety and you don't you get nervous about even going out for dinner with friends for whatever reason you know just simply recognizing that and being like it's okay it's gonna be okay you know it's gonna be okay guys it's gonna be okay it may be a little fucked up okay i'm not gonna lie but it'll be okay you know and everyone has it and everyone to me from cancer or especially like mental illness to me is like if you can survive battling against your own mind that makes you a hero that to me is like inspiration you know like that and it could be simple things and that's all you have to do make a list of little simple things that you can accomplish don't make that list too long okay because I have done to-do lists that are like, I get like two things done. Just kiss, keep it simple. Yeah, stupid. yeah. So just little things like that, you know. I think that them go a long way. A little yeah. glitter here and there. A little glitter here. A little glitter. Aww. Yeah. Well, this was freaking amazing, and I'm so happy I got this opportunity to have you here. Um, and thanks for having me. You know, in my amazing studio. <laughs> Like, you are one in a million, and you are someone who needs to be recognized for all the <laughs> amazing attributes that you share to the world, because you are not only a survivor, you are a hero. Yeah. And I definitely hear what's in my heart. Like, I um, look up to you, and I care about you so much. Like, every day, I'll even, like, look on the internet land and make sure you post something today or something. Well, because... my friends have posted, like, horrible memes. Yeah, <laughs> I know, like, she's, like... <laughs> She's always on it, she's, no matter what, she's trying to hey, yeah, I'm alive, fuckers, or something. Yeah, yeah, and you know what, I, a lot of people talk down about social media, and oh, it's this, it's that, but you know what, social media helped me so much, because I may have been confined to a room, or even when I was in isolation in the hospital, and literally, like, blocked off from the world, but I could go on there, I could read what everyone's posting, I could comment, you know, my friends who have little kids who I have not even been able to meet or see, you know, I can see them growing up. I can see my friends doing well, you know, whether across the country, across the globe, I can see that. I can live through their travels. So if I spam like all 30 of their pictures, they don't care because they know I'm like living vicariously through them with yeah. everything they post. And so... Yeah, I get that it gets a bad rap, absolutely. But on the other hand, it does bring you closer together for people. It really does. Ready? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to do our sign off, try to do it together. So whatever whatever it is, remember it's all about love. Yeah. So here, ready? As always, always, remember, don't forget to smile. smile. And you truly do mean the world. world. Ah, look at that. I need that alone. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yes. Love you.